There's another one in Sheffield. This was a sort of uh, robotic project developing um, artificial larynx for people that had throat cancer. And I just think it was, again, it's um, this idea of the uncanny. You used to walk off an ordinary sort of little side street in Sheffield and into a lab and to see these kind of very strange sort of scenarios. I mean, they were quite kind of odd. And also shot a bit at, um, did a bit of research at um, MIT, um, MIT Museum in Boston, where you know they've got a media lab there and robotics is really very well developed there. This was this is Autumn, can't see it in the case on the screen maybe. And this was a social robot that actually was in production and it was meant to help people with weight loss. So you'd install one of these things in your home and you know it would have a touch screen. You'd press it and it'd tell you how many calories you'd have ingested and how many you could ingest them. So you know very much a sort of reality um, a robotic fish, again, something that was in use. But I think that you know the robots that really interested me were the much cruder robots. This is a this is something from Edinburgh um, in the, the Royal Museum of Edinburgh. And this was Freddie. This is a very famous anthropomimetic, which is what you call robots that take on the appearance of um, the human or the animal. This is a an object um, that was developed by um, Donald Meakey and this robot is very famous because it was one of the precursors in the late 60s, early 70s of the kind of robots you see now on the t assembly lines that are constructing cars. So, you know, a very, historically a very important piece. But what really I found very sort of powerful about that was how, how little it took for you to really invest in the object. So very crude, but just two big washers and, and a couple of wires and that was it. You were in, <laughs> or I was anyway. Um, and I got really quite fond of, um, of Freddie and used him in a number of different ways. Um, this is sort of like a montage piece. And really, I suppose, very interested. At the same time, I was listening to a lot, of, thinking a lot about, about development of computer-aided speech and synthetic speech and just thinking about things like how little we needed to make us invest in a, in a machine. So thinking about all these ideas that sort of like roboticists and people interested in artificial intelligence. That's this, it's installed at the, the Photographer's Gallery in London. I don't know if you've been to the new Photographer's Gallery, but they've got a, a digital wall as you come in, which um, is always really interesting and it's curated by a woman called Katrina Sluis, who's really great. And um, if you get a chance to go along, we also have Do Deutsche Borsen upstairs, which, which looks great this year, but it's always very interesting, I think, to see what she's curating on the digital walk. It's always very edgy and uh, worth having a look at, and it's all documented online. This was a part, part of a project called, I keep calling it the Joy of Gift, but she wasn't allowed to call it that. Born in 1984, and it was about the development of the GIF, you know, the moving GIF. Very interesting, and if you're interested in, in that kind of thing, there's a lot of documentation um, online about, about that project. Again, it's like with the, um, with the skater, I made um, a short film. Shoe doll, 
you know, so it's a piece that was produced over 100 years later, um, but startlingly similar, and again, sort of very crude, but I found it a very kind of poignant, and quite a sort of touching sort of object in the way that it kind of indicated that, you know, constant, constant sort of striving, um, or belief that eventually we can sort of breathe life into, um, into an animal.